Hi, I'm Philomena Ned, and today we're going to talk about Chagrin Syndrome. Chagrin Syndrome is a chronic autoimmune disorder in where moisture-producing glands are damaged, and that damage can affect other organs and many body systems. Today we will also be talking to a stakeholder, someone who has been diagnosed with Chagrin Syndrome. So after today's session, I hope you all have some great takeaways. Stay tuned. Chagrin syndrome can be difficult to diagnose because many of its symptoms mimic other disorders. First, we will start off with a level of blood test and we will also do a liver and kidney function test. These tests will kind of uh, let us know if there are any antibiotics present. Uh, within the body that's, that are kind of common with Chagrin syndrome. Uh, and it'll help us pinpoint what type of treatment we would need to do uh, moving forward. Um, also, an eye test uh, could be done. It's called the Schirmer's tear test. And what we do is we get a filter paper and put it under your lower eyelid and that'll help us measure your tear production. Um, another test we can do is imaging. Uh, the imaging is a cellogram, and what we'll do is we will inject dye right uh, in front of your ear, and that dye will let us know how much saliva is, is flowing into your mouth. Um, another procedure we can do is a biopsy. Um, it's highly unlikely, but it is effective. Uh, and what we do with the biopsy is uh, we go into your lip area and uh, remove a little bit of tissue just to see if there are any inflammation cells uh, present. There are two main symptoms uh, for Sharpgrim's uh, syndrome, and it would be dry eyes and dry mouth, but there are other symptoms as well. Uh, some people's symptoms are lesser than others. Uh, we have swollen salivary glands, uh, sore and cracked tongue, vaginal dryness, skin rash, joint pain, dry nose and throat. And there also can be pain in your fingers, your wrists, and your ankles, and it can also be consistent with swelling as well. Exergen glands like your eyes and your mouth are all affected by Sargon's uh, syndrome. And also, it can cause you to have aches and pains, uh, problems sleeping, it can cause depression. When you're looking at this image here, it kind of shows you the different areas that Chagrin syndrome is affecting. Uh, you can have arthritis and muscle pain, dry skin, rash, you can have um, stomach upset, um, also neurological problems like brain fog. Um, dry eyes and cornea, ulceritis, and abnormal liver functions. Now, although Chagrin syndrome is treatable, it is not life-threatening. As you can see here, the immune system begins to attack your own body's tissue and blood cells as it moves through the blood vessels and it can cause more symptoms with Chagrin syndrome and also a positive diagnosis, which is what we are currently looking for. There is absolutely no way to prevent Chagrin syndrome, uh, especially since it's believed to be hereditary. Uh, there are medications that uh, you can help use to reduce some of the symptoms, uh, but like with anything, when you have a comorbidity of different diseases and disorders, it can further complicate things. There is no cure for Chagrin syndrome, um, but there are medications that we can prescribe, but each person is different. Uh, we can give you a medication to decrease your eye inflammations and increase your uh, saliva production. Uh, there is a medication called Trexol that can suppress your immune system. Uh, we can also do a small outpatient surgery where we go into your eye and we actually close your tear ducts. 
There are more than 3 million cases in the United States of Chagrin syndrome. Uh, they're most common in females uh, with a ratio of 9 to 1 to men uh, between the ages of 30 to 50 years old. Now, there are some cases where children and infants and also men get Chagrin syndrome. So don't think that you're excluded. Uh, and any type of family history of uh, Chagrin's will also increase your chances of being diagnosed as well. My name is Tabitha Grimes. I was diagnosed with Chagrin syndrome in 2010, which was 10 years ago. Initially, I had some signs of Chagrin syndrome that I wasn't aware of. In, 2002, in the year 2000, I had uh, every lift nut under my armpit swell up or was inflamed. Um, no one was able to tell me what that was. 2002, I had the same issue. My lift noid swell up under my arms, every lift noid. Not until 2009 is when I had this violent cough upon my return from Iraq. That's what they diagnosed me with, having some a chronic cough from Iraq. Then eventually I started having chest pains. Went in and I got a uh, lung I had a lung biopsy. The result from the lung biopsy is that I had interstitial lung disease. So they sent me to the dental clinic in order to get a lip biopsy and remove some of my glands. With that is where they were. They officially diagnosed me with Sjogren's syndrome. Once I was diagnosed with Sjogren's syndrome, I was put on steroids and the steroids caused me to have vascular necrosis and also I developed arthritis. Also I de de developed Raynard's disease in my fingers. And those were my initial illnesses. With those il illnesses created a lot of pain for me. So I've had pain every day. I have migraines, I have uh, gastroparalysis, I have um, neuropathy. Uh, these different illnesses change my life. I have good days with, with Sjogren's maybe two good days with Sjogren, and it take me four days to recover. Um, I'm just so happy that someone has taken an interest in my, our illness and, um, and doing something like this for it. Thank you, Tabitha, for sharing. There are many people that are affected by Sjogren syndrome in the world today, and one is being tennis player Venus Williams, who is now the ambassador for Sjogren syndrome foundation. Well, that's all we have for today, and thank you all for listening, and I hope you enjoyed today's session. Goodbye.